Hello and welcome to reInvent. My name is Siavaj Irani, and in this session, I'm going to talk about migrating Microsoft workloads to AWS. We are going to start with an overview of migration journey and then cover common Microsoft workload migration patterns, including Identity and Active Directory, Microsoft SQL Server, and Microsoft.NET workloads. We will talk about different tools and methods for migrating each of these workloads. We will also cover end of support program for Microsoft products that have reached their end of support. And in the end, we will have a demo of Cloud Indoor and how it can help migrating virtual machines to the cloud. Migrating large scale workloads can be challenging and to simplify the process, we have defined different phases for a migration journey. There are three phases in our approach to complete large scale migrations. And then you start operating and optimizing in the cloud. First is an assessment phase. This is where we build a business case and perform a cloud readiness assessment. Second is a mobilization phase in which we build an AWS architecture, migration plan, and mobilize businesses to migrate at scale. Third is migration and modernization phase where we move workloads to AWS and a cloud operating model is put in place to run and optimize for further business benefits. In this session, we are going to focus on migrate and modernize phase for Microsoft workloads. If we look at different layers of Microsoft workloads, usually Identity and Active Directory is the core of the application for authentication and authorization. Then usually we have Microsoft SQL Server for the database layer and then the .NET applications which work with the Active Directory and SQL servers. First, let's talk about different options and patterns for migrating Active Directory to AWS. There are different patterns that customers migrate their Microsoft Active Directory to the cloud. First option is self-managed Active Directory on EC2. This option requires customers promote domain controllers in EC2 and then manage it themselves. Second option is to use AWS Managed Active Directory in which AWS manages Microsoft Active Directory and also it allows more integration with AWS services. Third option is to use AWS Directory Service AD Connector, which is a directory gateway with which you can redirect directory requests to your on-premises Microsoft Active Directory without caching any information in the cloud. Let's drill down into each and discuss to see which option best fits your requirements. With self-managed Microsoft Active Directory on EC2, basically you will require to create Windows Server EC2 instances and then promote them to domain controllers and make them either additional domain controllers for your existing domain or a new Active Directory domain. Of course, this requires proper network connection between your on-premises and the cloud, which can be accomplished by different technologies, for example, AWS Direct Connect or AWS Site-to-Site -Site VPN. Customers usually deploy domain controllers in different availability zones for fault tolerance in case of an availability zone failure. Some of the features of running Microsoft Active Directory on EC2 is that first you'll be able to extend the same Active Directory domain as your on-premises, and it can use the same schema, users, and configuration as your on-premises Active Directory. And because you are building and operating the, the AD yourself, you'll get full administrator access to the domain. And with that, you can establish trust or just add additional domain controllers to replicate with your on-premises domain. It also allows you to load applications which require full domain administrator permissions like Microsoft Exchange Server. When you launch AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory, it creates a highly available pair of domain controllers connected to your virtual private cloud or VPC and the domain controllers run in different availability zones in a region of your choice and host monitoring and recovery, data replications, snapshots, and software updates are automatically configured and managed for you. With AWS Managed Active Microsoft Active Directory, you can run directory aware workloads in the AWS cloud, including Microsoft SharePoint and custom .NET and SQL Server based application. You can also configure a trust relationship between AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory in the AWS cloud and your existing on-premises Microsoft Active Directory, providing users and groups 
with access to resources in either domain using single sign-up. You can also use seamless domain join feature to join your EC2 instances seamlessly to Active Directory. AD Connector is a directory gateway with which you can redirect directory requests to your on-premises Microsoft Active Directory without caching any information in the cloud. AD Connector comes in two sizes, small and large. You can also spread application loads across multiple AD connectors to scale to your performance needs. Once set up, AD Connector offers the following benefits. Your end users and IT administrators can use their existing corporate credentials to log on to AWS applications such as Amazon Workspaces, Amazon WorkDocs, and Amazon Work WorkMail. You can manage AWS resources like Amazon EC2 instances or Amazon S3 buckets through IAM role-based access to the AWS Management Console. You can also use AD Connector to enable multi-factor authentications by integrating with your existing RADIUS-based MFA infrastructure to provide an additional layer of security when users access AWS applications. Now let's talk about different SQL Server migration patterns. There are different patterns to run Microsoft SQL Server in the cloud. First is to run SQL on an EC2 instance. In this case, you create and manage the EC2 instance that is running the SQL Server, and you will get full access to the operating system and SQL database. As a result of that, you need to manage backup and maintenance or patching for the SQL Server and the operating system. With this option, you can bring your own license for SQL Server, and also it supports a uh, uh, and, it, and it also it's supported on Amazon Linux, Red Hat, and Ubuntu. Another option is to run Amazon RDS for SQL Server, which is a managed SQL Server. Amazon RDS for SQL Server makes it easy to set up, operate, and scale SQL Server deployments in the cloud. With Amazon RDS, you can deploy multiple editions of SQL Server in minutes uh, with cost-efficient and re re resizable compute capacity. Amazon RDS frees you up to focus on application development by managing time-consuming database administration tasks, including provisioning, backup, software patching, monitoring, and hardware scaling. There are different paths and tools that, that help with Microsoft SQL Server migrations to the cloud. AWS Database Migration Service, uh, or tools that help with uh, migrating the whole virtual machine like Cloud Indoor and Server Migration Service, or native SQL features like Backup and Restore or Log Shipping or Distributed Availability Groups, which can help with migrating the database itself. First, let's talk about migration, Database Migration Service. Migrating databases can be challenging when moving from on-premises to the cloud or from one relational database engine to another. AWS Database Migration Service, or AWS DMS, is a cloud service that makes it easy to migrate relational databases, data warehouses, NoSQL databases, and other types of data stores. During a migration, the source database remains fully operational, minimizing downtime to applications that rely on database. To perform a database migration, AWS DMS creates a DMS replication server, which connects to source data store, reads the source data, and formats the data for consumption by target data store. It then loads the data into target data store. Most of this processing happens in memory, though large transactions might require some buffering to the disk. AWS DMS supports a so as a source variety of Microsoft SQL Server versions from SQL Server 2005 to SQL Server 2019 with different editions like Enterprise, Standard, Workgroup, Developer, and Web Editions. AWS DMS also allows ongoing replication for Microsoft SQL Server, which uses native SQL Server replication for tables with primary keys and change data capture, or CDC, for tables without primary keys. There are times which you need to migrate whole SQL Server operating system with all of its OS and SQL configuration, and that becomes challenging depending on the size of the environment and cutoff time requirements. Cloud Indoor migration helps you simplify, expedite, and automate large-scale migrations to AWS. To do the migration, Cloud Indoor first uses its agent 
to do a continuous block level replication from the source machines into a staging area in your AWS account without causing downtime or impacting performance. When you're ready to launch the production machines, Cloud Indoor migration automatically converts your machines from the source infrastructure into the AWS infrastructure so they can boot and run natively in AWS. We will have a demo of Cloud Indoor later in this session. What if you want to migrate the whole virtual machine and its configuration, however your IT policies does not allow you to use agent-based migration tools? AWS Server Migration Service is an agent-less service that allows you to automate, schedule, and track incremental replications of live server volumes, making it easier for you to coordinate large-scale server migrations. When you run AWS Server Migration Service, it uses a virtual appliance running either in Microsoft Hyper-V or VMware in your data center, and then when you schedule a migration task, and then uh, when you schedule a migration task, the Server Migration Service uploads the virtual machine's disk to an Amazon S3 bucket, and from there it converts the disk to EBS volumes. After adding required hypervisor drivers and components, Amazon machine images are created from those EBS volumes, which then you can create EC2 instances from them. What if you want to migrate uh, your SQL Server using native tools without relying on third-party tools? Distributed Availability Groups is a native SQL Server feature which supports two completely different availability group configurations. It enables not only easier disaster recovery in multi-site scenarios, but also migration scenarios. Whether you are migrating to a new hardware or virtual machine, configuring a distributed availability group allows, you to mig uh, allows a migration to occur, where in the past you might have used backup and restore or log shipping. Initially, when you conf configure the uh, distributed availability group for migration, the data replication will be set to asynchronous so it won't impact applications that are still relying on the on-premises database. When you get close to the cutover time, you stop all, that, all data traffic to the original availability group and you set the distributed availability group replication to synchronous. This action ensures that the primary replica of the secondary of the second availability group is fully synchronized. So there would be no data loss. After you verified your, the synchronization, then you can fail over to the secondary availability group. Now let's talk about different Microsoft.NET migration patterns. There are different patterns and platforms to run .NET applications in AWS. First is rehosting, otherwise known, known as left and shift, the applications to Amazon EC2 instances. This can be done using similar tools like Cloud Indoor or Server Migration Service. Second is replatforming, in which you might take, make a few cloud or other optimizations in order to achieve more tangible benefit, achieve some tangible benefit. But you're, you aren't otherwise changed, uh, going to change uh, the core architecture of the application. For example, you may migrate your applications to a fully managed platforms, uh, platform like Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. Or if your application is container-based, you can run it using Elastic Amazon AWS Elastic Container Service or Am AWS Elastic uh, Kubernetes Service. Third is refactoring or re-architecting, which is reimagining how the application is architected and developed, typically using cloud native features. This is usually driven by a strong business need to add features, scale, or performance that would otherwise be difficult to achieve in the application's existing environment. For example, when you move from a monolithic application to a serverless application based on AWS Lambda. Replatforming web app, Windows web applications to a managed service like Elastic Beanstalk can be difficult. To help with that, we built Windows Web Application Migration Assistant, which is an interactive PowerShell script that migrates websites and their configuration to Elastic, AWS Elastic Beanstalk. The Migration Assistant is available as an open source project on GitHub and can migrate entire ASP.NET applications running on .NET Framework in Windows as well as ASP.NET Core. It helps you migrate an entire website 
and its configuration to Elastic Beanstalk with minimal or no changes to the application and as a result it increases developer productivity and reduces IT operations overhead. Here's an overview of, my, of the migration assistance workflow. Let's assume that you have a web application running ASP.NET or ASP.NET Core on-premises. When you run the web application migration assistant PowerShell on the IS server, first the script automatically discovers and lists any websites hosted, uh, hosted on that uh, local IIS server. Second, you choose the websites that you wish to migrate. Then the script checks selected website's web config and iterates through its connection string settings. You are then prompted to update connection strings to have them point to the migrated database instance. Fourth, the script generates an Elastic Beanstalk deployment bundle. This bundle includes web application binaries and instructions for Elastic Beanstalk uh, on how it should host the application. Finally, the script uploads the deployment bundle to the Elastic Beanstalk application for hosting. Once the application is migrated to Elastic Beanstalk, you can have different versions of your application for different environments like, like test and production. Containerizing your application from .NET Framework to .NET Core can be difficult. AWS App2Container, or A2C, is a command line tool for modernizing .NET and Java applications into containerized applications. App to Container analyzes and builds an inventory of all applications running in virtual machines running either on premises or in the cloud. You can simply select the application you want to containerize, and A2C packages the ap application artifact and, uh, and identified de dependencies into container images, configures the network ports, and generates ECS task and, uh, and Kubernetes pod definitions. It can help with uh, converting an entire website and its configuration to Windows container with minimal or no changes to the application. Let's see how app to container works under the hood. Let's assume you have an application server running on Microsoft IIS. When you run the app to container PowerShell, it discovers and inventories all IIS web websites capable to be containerized. Then you select the IIS site which you want to containerize. Then App to Container analyzes dependencies and IIS configuration. As an optional step, it allows you to update any database connection strings, and after that, it extracts all the necessary artifacts to containerize the application. Once the artifacts are ready, they are uploaded to an Amazon S3 bucket. From there, you can build and push the container image to Amazon Elastic Container Registry or register as a task in Amazon Elastic Container Service. It also allows you to generate deployment file to be used in Kubernetes using Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service. Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2 already reached their end of support on January 2020. But there are still legacy applications which are only compatible with these older operating systems and customers still want to run these applications without making any code changes to, the, to make the application work on the newer operating systems. End of Support Migration Program or EMP for Windows Server helps customers package legacy applications allowing them to run on newer Windows Server without any code changes. After going through the EMP process, legacy application is wrapped in EMP compatibility package which intercepts calls made by the application to the underlying OS and resolves all incompatibilities while maintaining the complete application behavior as is. EMP compatibility package achieves this due to its three key features, redirection, isolation, and capability. First in redirection, cap uh, capability pack uh, compatibility package intercepts any API call that legacy applications makes to the operating system and resolves in case of incompatibilities. For example, if the application depends on an older version of .NET, like .NET 1.0, this older runtime is included in the package itself, and any call legacy applications makes to the underlying OS 
for the dot for that dot and runtime is redirected to the dot and runtime included in the package. Similarly, the package can per, uh, can perform re redirections for registry keys, hard coded Windows file paths, networking ports, and and etc. Isolation. This feature. Uh, this feature allows the compatibility package to run several versions of a runtime on the same operating system. The older runtime is isolated from the external environment and can only be accessed by the legacy application. This further improves the security posture. Compatibility. EMP provides, the app provides application to OS compatibility while maintaining the application behavior and integration with other application tiers databases, services, and etc. Additionally, EMP solves for, uh, solves for several OS incompatibilities like DEP out, COM virtualization, uh, report, reporting different OS back to the application, and, and etc. With that, let's get to the, our, our demo section. For the demo, I'm going to show you how you can use Cloud Indoor to migrate a SQL server from on-premises to AWS Cloud. First, we need to create a new project using Cloud Indoor Console. I'm going to call it Migrate to AWS. And for project type is a migration, and then I click on Create Project. Next, I need to do an initial setup and basically create an IAM role, IAM user, which allows Cloud Indoor to interact with AWS. I've already created an IAM user and here I'm going to provide access key and secret key uh, to, for, for Cloud Indoor. And hit save. Because my VM is located on uh, on-premises, I'm going to choose migration source as other infrastructure. And for the migration target, I'm going to choose AWS US East Ohio. I'm going to leave everything default here and save replication settings. Next, what I need to do is install Cloud Indoor Agent on my source machine. To do that, I need to download the agent on my source box and then run this command so it installs and registers my source machine with my Cloud Indoor account. I've already RDP to my source machine and I've already downloaded the Cloud Indoor Agent. Now I'm going to run that command so it installs the agent and registers this machine with my Cloud Indoor account. Now the agent is finished installing, and if I come back to Cloud Indoor Console, I can see that my server is now showing up here. What happens is that in the beginning, Cloud Indoor does a full initial replication to replicate all the on-premises server data and volumes to Cloud Indoor. And then after that, it does a continuous block replication. We're going to pause the video and come back until this initial replication is finished. OK, now the Cloud Indoor is doing a continuous data replication. And if I connect back to my source SQL server, for demo purposes, I've created a test database. And I'm running a query in which I'm writing the current time every second into a table in this database. And if I run this other query, I can see what, uh, that every second there is a new record being added to the table. Next, I'm going to come back in uh, Cloud Indoor. And I'm going to select the SQL Server and then click on Launch Target Machine. Basically, what it does, it's going to launch a replica of my SQL Server into the AWS account in Ohio region. I'm going to choose Test Mode here. And after that, I'm going to hit Continue. We can see the job progress status using this job progress window. After a few minutes, Cloud Indoor is going to launch a replica of my source SQL server on the AWS side. We're going to pause the video and come back once the replica deployment is finished. OK, now the job is finished. Notice the time that the job started was 4.14.19 AM. And if I come back to the AWS console, you can see that the replica of the SQL Server is running as an EC2 instance. I'm going to RDP to this EC2 instance. 
here. And now that I'm RDP'd, if I run the, the query that shows the top five records of that table with the current time, you can see that the last record is 414, which is within seconds of when the replication job started. With that, we get to the end of our demo section. For the action call, uh, to learn more about Windows on AWS, please visit aws.amazon.com forward slash windows. Uh, look for applications which can be migrated using Cloud Endure to establish early wins. Revisit your .NET applications and look for opportunities to modernize them. Also here, there is a list of other reInvent sessions which can be useful for running Microsoft workloads on AWS. And at the end, please note that your feedback is super important. We we'll listen to our customers and we want to know what topics matters to you. If you like this session, it's important that you rate a session at five so we know you like the content and also share what you liked and you didn't like so we can continue to improve from your feedback. I hope it was informative and thanks for watching.